Hello, my name is Trudy Chatwin. I'm a retired biologist. I, in fact, grew up in an agaryoke ecosystem. They're such in such beautiful environments that they tend to be great places to live, and so they get developed. And so they're a very rare in, in, ecosystem on Vancouver Island, in fact, one in Canada. They um, harbor about 97 species at risk, and I have in recognition of that, groups of us formed in about, oh gosh, it was 1993 actually, the Gary Oak Ecosystems Recovery Team. I thought I would share some of that beautiful, that knowledge of these beautiful ecosystems in spring. And that is their crowning glory, is in the very springtime. For example, right now we sit and we can hear the white crowned sparrow singing in the background. And all these, the species are not only plants, in an ecosystem you have the whole thing. So it's not only the Gary Oak trees, which are in the background, which we are so lucky to have on Protection Island, but it's the understory and the plants and animals that rely on them. Right now, I'm sitting in a, a little med um, a meadow of white fawn lilies. They are called fawn lilies because their leaves have these little freckles on them. Other name, when I was a child, we grew up with my grandmother in Victoria and she used to take us picking, picking lilies at the time and we called them Easter lilies because they come at Easter. And so it's always a special time because I remember doing that with my, my grandmother who taught, taught me about the, the flowers. It was maintained by First Nations in the past. So they, they actually would burn these kind of meadows and they would burn them and dig for camas lilies. Not particularly these lilies, but for camas. And they maintained them as a pretty much an agricultural practice. And within, and since we can't burn these days, what I do in this me meadow to maintain it is we took all the broom away. There used to be broom up to about, about two meters high in here. Um, got the broom down first and then after the lilies leaves die out, which is in about June, July, you know, by July, we, I mow, we mow this area, which emulates somewhat burning. The camas was really what the, the First Nations of this area of our Salish Sea um, grew, you know, had really in particular, it was a carbohydrate. So they harvested the bulbs and they could trade those, those for other things like ulican grease up from the nass and things and it was a very highly prized item that was really cultivated in this area. So they're the first flowers of spring and to me they really when the fawn lilies bloom I become happy because they mean that the light is increasing and that the waters are warming outside in the Salish Sea and that the productivity of spring starts. This is a Gary Oak tree which is their, their Latin name is Quercus gariana, and they are, uh, I think they're a beautiful, uh, of course, I love most things, but a beautiful tree. Uh, they have this interesting bark that has these little crevices, which makes it home for a lot of different rare mosses and um, little insects and things. And also you'll sometimes see, you'll see a brown creeper creeping up there. And so they are important for, um, nesting birds and in particular one that is a great favorite to me is a, um, a the western bluebird and so we worked on Gary Oak ecosystems with our Gary Oak ecosystem recovery team and the Couch and Valley naturalists to reintroduce western bluebirds to the Couch and Gary Oak preserve which is in Duncan and the reason that was so good we chose that ecosystem is because Gary Oaks have branches that generally swoop towards the ground which is kind of perfect for um, bluebird habitat and nesting they swoop down to the ground to catch insects and so it was a really and they live in open areas they don't live in forests and so it's a really important area for the western bluebirds i kind of love the gary oaks at every time of year in the winters they look really gnarly their branches are curved and they have this sort of um ancient look to them, beautiful look to them. And I kind of like that silhouette of them and that's what they do. And right now, in this time in April, their buds are just coming out, but they don't really actually leaf out until May. 
And so for quite a long time, even longer than, you know, the maples, they are actually not in leaf. But then they lose their leaves and their leaves are very um, nutritious for the soil. So that's why we get these lovely meadows underneath. So they're only distributed on the southeast of Vancouver Island in Washington, in certain areas they call them prairies. And there's a one stand of Gary Oaks, I believe, in there was one along in Sumas, and there's one up on the Fraser River. And those were we're not sure if those were take acorns that were distributed by First Nations during trading. We're uh, we're just located on Trillium Trail, which is one of my favorite places in the spring. And Trillium Trail, as you can see, is not really a meadow. It's um. It's more of a forested area, but Trillium Trail has abundance of these beautiful trilliums. And trilliums are lily, similar to the, they're all in the family Liliaceae, just like the, um, the fawn lilies. And they, they're the flower of Ontario, I believe. And these are called Trillium ovatum, which means oval leaf trillium. And you can just see the beautiful le three leaves. These two, I don't know if there's any, particular medicinal use of trillium or edible use of them they too are actually a thing of great beauty and in the background here you can just see um, the uh, the organ grape this is the dull organ grape which is one of the characteristic species of of the actual coastal Douglas fir ecosystem and then it will have purple berries in the fall 